Good afternoon to all our viewers. Thank you very much for staying with us. We apologize for the delay and for the technical difficulties. This is episode five. I'm Peter, and I'm with Dr. Reina Bel Reyes, astrophysicist. She's joining us from you're in Illinois right now. Chicago, Chicago. Chicago, yes, it's Chicago in Illinois. Right, that's in Illinois, right? Um, so good afternoon, Reina. What time is it there? It's 3 a.m. 3 a.m. Good morning. Thank you very much for joining <laughs> us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So can you say it's hello to our guests? Fun or good day wherever you are. Are we streaming now? Yes, we are streaming now. Okay. All right. Okay, so the topic of our discussion would be, Reina, what do you want to talk or what do you have for us this afternoon? Like we're trying to raise funds this afternoon to help the relief efforts in central Visayas, not just in eastern Visayas. We're also trying to help the people in central Visayas, especially the northern part of central Visayas, as well as the people of western Visayas and some of the islands in uh, Palawan. Right, so we're trying to raise funds for the Philippine Red Cross to aid the people, survivors who are badly stricken by, badly affected by Super Typhoon Yolanda. What do you have to say about this? natural calamity and the way we Filipinos can be better equipped to prepare for such a natural disaster the next time. Yes, yes. Um, I don't have the, all the answers, um, but yeah, I want to say um, but that first it's really um, horrible what happened. It's an absolute uh, devastating and um, it struck me hard too, uh, and us, uh, many Filipinos all over the world. Um, but over time, after um, getting shell shocked emotionally and feeling helpless and not uh, sure what to do, in the end, I think uh, what made sense to me is that we all have to help in our own way and uh, because that's the best that's uh, the best way we can help and also help ourselves to, to, to cope and to deal with this um, so for myself it's from the science side and um, feeling the responsibility from the side of scientists uh, on this but for everyone artists um, can help and they, they're needed um, writers write, you know, a friend said dancers dance, artists to make art, and um, scientists um, we have to uh, look at it from the uh, systematic point of view, and also I think we have the sense of thinking, of course, uh, there's um, short-term, very urgent needs, but at the same time, this is a long haul, and there's um, a long-term um, uh, yeah we should also not uh, you know, yeah there's time to think of the intermediate and the long-term um, things we can do and um, and also and, and in a way think of it as an op opportunity um, to do things better to do things right um, and take advantage of this national discourse that is happening right now and, and the, the spirit of people coming together and, and just wanting to do something and turn that into something positive because um, that's the silver, that's the only silver lining that, uh, that we can see from in this um, devastation. Yes. So for the people who are with us online this afternoon, just in case you guys are not familiar, so Reina is an astrophysicist. She is a postdoctoral post fellow at the University of Chicago. And she's famous among many other things for her study 
on the effects of gravity and its relationship with Einstein's theory of gravity, in general theory of relativity, as well as for uh, linking the arts and science in data representation. So, let me just, um, so and look for my just questions. Trying to log in. Oh. So I can chat, right? Oh yeah. Ray, do you have? Can you think of any models for the r communication between the science, the scientists especially, and the public that we as Filipinos can use to em and emulate and refine to better equip us to prepare for the next disaster and to increase our resilience as a society? Yes. Um, yeah, definitely there's more we can do. Like, from what I um, read so far, I'm trying to understand what happened. It's still very preliminary. I think, I think one thing we have to do is, as things go on, is we really want to understand what happened. Not only this time, but also in, in previous um, disasters, like the earthquake and Sendo and, and all the way back. Um, um, so... Um, what I gathered is that the scientists at, at Project NOAA and Pagasa mm -hmm. actually did a good, they say, a good job of predicting the mm -hmm. the outcome, um, but there was still and 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 as a result, some it's a really a case to case basis that some towns in some places actually did a good job in evacuating their their people, uh -huh. right? And people understood the the the, the effects that the storm surge and then that, can have that the danger to act on. Uh, but there's still there are reports that were some and some people interviewed saying that if they knew what a storm surge was, they would have evacuated. There is this place where they they usually get flooding from the rivers. So they evacuated the people close to the river banks, but not the people on the coasts. So clearly, they did not understand uh, the, the what the storm surge was. So mm -hmm. there's so I, in a way, we should learn from like what happened on those cases where they evacuated and saved people's lives, um, and use that, like learn from that and use that for. For everywhere, for the next uh, part. So we we have, I think, um, cases where where the communication worked, but there are also sadly many cases where it didn't. And I think the best thing to do is to understand is to yeah, understand what worked and 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 use and use that. Um, I think there's it's, it's complicated. I mean, it's non trivial the communication, it's even. Yeah, the, the 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 term storm surge. We go back to that because it's like it's the new vocabulary we have. I mean, personally, I have to admit, I don't know what a storm surge was. I didn't know what a storm surge was myself um, before this happened. Um, and this in this this whole thing, they just said it's uh, like a tsunami. We would have evacuated. It means so much. Um, so they're still. It's not enough to say storm surge and what they said ten. Leave it at that. And leave it at that. Um, in the first place, um, it has to be communicated. I believe in the the language of the people. Uh -huh. uh, it's, if it's, it's Tagalog, yeah. or Taya, or Arai. This has always been right. Uh, the nature of our country. So. We just have to accept that and use our resources to um, to translate, not to translate, but to get people who who speak the local language to to understand, and then to t say it in their own in, in their own way to explain it in their own way. We can keep storm search as the English, mm -hmm. 
word because you know people in the brain, but then you have to explain it in a way that people understand. Um, so mm, that's the challenge. Yeah, I see. Because, for example, in in Japan, the word they have for tsunami is a Japanese word. Yes. And that's very understandable because Japan is one of the most earthquake prone and tsunami prone countries in the world. And being the most typhoon prone country in the world, I agree that we Filipinos must have a native word for typhoon, for storm surge, and for the many natural phenomena that are linked with typhoons. But, Reina, you mentioned that interesting case wherein many people complain that they didn't understand what a storm surge means. And if they were told that this was like a tsunami, they would have reacted to save many lives. What do you think is the scientific ethics involved, for example, in asking scientists to use the wrong word, tsunami, to, cha- to save lives? For example, if, for example, Dr. Lagmai, if Mr. Mahar Lagmai used the word tsunami, I suspect that many lives would have indeed been saved. Many people would have evacuated to a higher place and would have been saved if they were warned of a tsunami. But of course they were told that there was a storm surge and the effect was quite similar. What do you think does this say about the relationship between the words we use and the importance of being strict with terms in science? Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, I think it's, it's, um, yeah, I, I, you do not have to sacrifice accuracy um, for, for, to communicate. So, um, of course, you can say storm surge, mm-hmm. but it's just a word, right? You yeah. can say the effects would be like a tsunami. Oh. And um, it would have probably communicated it better than mm. or, or find a different way um, so, but but now I think it's clear that, that it was like a tsunami the effects mm-hmm. were exactly the same as what happened in, in Tohoku, Japan uh, years ago so I see no problem with with saying it's exactly like a tsunami in, in terms of its effects because it's a wave um, from the ocean um, and so definitely the coastal towns coastal parts should be evacuated. But it, it goes more than that. I think we have to... Um, yep, yeah, it's not just the, the words, but the, um, the actual awareness of the people. Every... Like for... for all the... People at risk. There must, there should now be like a a, a, a working you know, system where you start with the the forecasts of the scientists, but it has to then go through all the LGUs, the churches, the schools, and then and then and everyone. Should, um, have an idea now um, where they will go, what they will do, and, and I, I believe, I mean, some of it actually. So the the, the and to say like in, in the club cities, really, where would you evacuate people? The whole city was vulnerable. So it's really two questions there. Um, for example, one one thing that struck me, and this is I'm still grappling with it, um, because we're an archipelago. So, if, if you count all the areas that will be affected, that could have been affected by the the storm surge, then you have so many people you have to evacuate in in 
also the storm, right? The path of the storm. Mm-hmm. We have we can only forecast. We cannot predict to to great accuracy. It could have gone um, kilometers, maybe. Um, from the past, and then it would have hit different places. And so, if you really want to, um, and just evacuate all those people, it would be uh, the the logistics of that is is still uh, is, is is of uh, great magnitude. Then, so we have to. We have to use our all our brain power, the country yeah. brain power to, to deal with this. And then on the, on the positive side, this is very grim. Um, the, 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 the positive side is that we should be we should be leading the world. It's um, we could be a model actually for the rest of the world um, on how to do this. As we've seen more and more. Um, natural disasters are uh, affecting even here in the U.S. Um, and so, what we can take out is learn from this experience and and with better and um, coordinate with other people, the Japanese, for example. I mean, mm-hmm. I think we can emulate how. Even the schools, the school children, they have drills. You know, this has been mm-hmm. their um, education from as children. So yeah, from their formative years, they've already been prepared for for the worst. And even for science education side, you know, my friend was talking to her kids about what happened. The kid's question was, "How does?" You know, the kid's question was, "How does a ty- typhoon form?" And so yeah, we have that to. Is a, that is an important question and something that all of us Filipinos must actually talk about at home and talk about in the classroom from from grade one up to college. Mm, in the family. Rayna, you raised. Yeah, you were saying. No, sorry, yeah, you're right. Uh, Even at home, the families, you know, there should be um, a plan now for each house. What to do, they have an emergency kit, have, you know, we have to be for flooding, even in Metro Manila and elsewhere. Reina, there's no way to prepare. Sorry to um, interrupt. But you, you raised so many interesting points about the 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 science education aspect of it, the logistical um, aspect of it, as well as the cultural. I would try, or will try, to extend the conversation to the rest of the Filipino free thinkers who are with me here in our studio. <laughs> so they're there. So, hello, guys. Okay. We'll try to change some settings so that we could all talk to you. Okay. So I'll just have a change of venue. I can see you all.
can hear all of you. Wait, wait. Uh, yes. Blink once if you can hear us, Rina. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, you said yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so I can do good. Can make Apparently, we have a problem in science, technology. <laughs> <laughs> Ask her to try speaking. Hi, Rina. Hi, Rina. Hi. 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 Yeah, yeah, let's say it's not true. true. Start. Start. Just, 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 just to just give you the sense of, of where we are. It's not only in our country, country. it's everywhere. everywhere. Because, because the science, science is, no, no, by, by training, training, we are, we are trained, trained to do science. science. And we, we are, are not trained, trained to communicate science. science. Um, here, here, for example, example the model like the idea is that, that there, there would be other, other people called science communicators. Um, um, journalists, usually writers, whose job, job is, is to communicate the science of the, science the, science to the public. public. Or what do you call lay people? That, that's the default. <laughs> People like, like us, because, because for example, if even um, um, the, 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 the 
particularly good understanding of, of what other scientists are doing. Right. By, by, by the jargon, the level of technical knowledge. So the idea is that, that um, um, you have yeah, these, these other, other people, people, other processes process that are doing the next science. science. Um, so, so, so it's, it's hard, hard to say things if it's a little bit of a thing. Okay, okay. 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 So it's, it's hard, hard to recall the data that's not science or not doing that. that. Yes. Yes. But, but, um, uh, my, my we don't have enough 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 We don't have Oh, yeah. I just stopped okay. talking. I can hear you. Great. Oh, I can be heard now. Now I can hear you. Hi. Sorry, sorry. 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 Uh, about that. Uh, okay, um, thank you, Reina. Yeah. Yeah. You're Reina. Yeah. So, Reina was talking about the lack of science communicators in the country and how the, How do you think, Reina, can we improve that deficiency in science communicators? Because as you were saying, most yeah. scientists or people who are trained in the sciences aren't as trained in communicating their findings with the public. There would be, in, I, in an ideal world, a uh, robust middle group of science communicators who will communicate the ideas and the findings of the scientists to the broader public. And you're right, as far as, for example, whether science is concerned, most of us, even those who are trained in different sciences, are also mm -hmm. part of the laity. Right? We are also laymen. As, so, yeah, as, yeah. as whether science is concerned. So we too need to be informed about the findings of Project NOAA and other yeah. similar yes. 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 So we're other we're similar uh, organizations. Yeah, what, what do you think, how can we improve the deficiency in science? Community? Yeah. Well, I think now there's, 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 Publishing the thoughts for other scientists or science communicators really coordinate with all the media, with the journalists, even or not science communicators per se. But this is an important top, an important topic as as politics. Yes, and so the communication between the scientists and the journalists. And then scientists and people on the ground in the field, what um, and and make an effort to, to do that. Um, I think there's um, there's needed um, sort of a change in attitude too. Um, that the scientist should not look at himself or herself as an authority that just said something and then it is absorbed as yes. um, there should be as I said a way communication the scientists and the people who are on the ground because they also have their own internal knowledge real wisdom from actually experiencing um, the effects of these disasters for years, which the scientists don't necessarily know. And so, yes, trying to learn where they're coming from, right, and, and then can real communication happen. For example, we um, should learn how information is usually disseminated in communities, like, right? they, can't come there and show PowerPoint presentation. They look at PowerPoint presentation.
you know, studies like journal, journals that, that have published their studies and, you know, um, went through the rigors of, of science. Um, they use scientific terms mm -hmm. to make them sound scientific and, uh, and to make them sound like experts. And when you, when you argue with them, they say that um, your science is just as good as our science. Mm -hmm. And you know there there's equal the evidence, merit. yeah, equal merit. On, on both sides of this argument. So, so how do you feel, and, how, and what do you think should be done about such such issues of you know, for example, case in point misinformation. Be, yeah, case in point would be um, a journalist who who mentioned and who said that there seems to be equal merit between you know the scientific hypothesis about storms, how storms form. And that conspiracy theory that's been going around. Yeah, they, 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 use, they use words like microwave and, and all that. Or more relevantly, you are a fellow advocate of the RH law, right? And uh, and this is one of the things that that there's a lot of scientific evidence. Like there's a there's a supposed scientist on the anti RH side saying a scientific sounding thing. What's your what's your take on this? Mm. It's very, very, um, it's a very difficult. Um, maybe we start with the microwave thing. So I had some friends who asked me if there is uh, to it, right? Because it went around. But, and and the thing is, it was two honest questions. So they didn't know what to, um, how, how to decide because also emotions are very, um, you know, all, all of this. And so I did some decision and it was really conspiracy theory that, um, that has a history of and just was introduced to us because of the, this type. Um, and so I think in this particular case, for example, the people are uh, the Filipinos did not really subscribe to this theory because of the way it was presented in a really very good presentation, actually. <laughs> Just learning now. Um, so, uh, I guess then critical thinking um, the, the key. And maybe, yeah, People then that's official yeah. already. Which is a, a good thing about science. There are no shortcuts. Yeah. There are no appeals to authority. They they don't work as well mm -hmm. in other contexts. Uh, um, but uh, thank you, Reina, for your time. But be before we we ask for your final message, we have a question here from... That's right. We've yeah. got uh, just a couple of questions from the chat. Uh, one from J.L. Dre, who is who would like to know more about uh, how, about your, your, this, your specific role in, uh, in, on your, on your team's achievement for proving Einstein's theory of general, general relativity. Uh, at the scale of galaxies. Sure, sure. Yeah, actually, it's it's not really a team. It's um, it's, a, it's my uh, project. No, no, not a big team. It's like uh, I it's part of my thesis and during my PhD work. Uh, for instance, I have my supervisor Jim Dunn and another collaborator who's supposed to at uh, the IA. Rachel, and then and then me. So what we do is, um, yeah, we were essentially um, I, we work, I worked on the on the project. So we do the calculations. I do the calculations, and then me sort of uh, once a week, and we discuss the results, and then uh, we talk about what to do next, and. And then we write the paper and then it's going to be public. So it's, it's like a small situation. 
so, at such a very, and I'm quoting here, at such a very young age, how will you feel if you were to be awarded the Nobel Prize for Physics? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's big, no? But no, it won't happen. But in a context, in the right context. Um, but it's a really exciting thing that we did, but it's like a proof of concept for... Um, that this such a measurement could be done. Um, and this, that, so the idea here is to differentiate or to test the Einstein's theory of gravity. I was just thinking maybe dec- decades later, we we'll find conclusive proof, something like that. Then I would be like in the footnote that back in, we did this. Uh, Reina Reyes, foremost in the race for the first Filipino with a Nobel Prize. Yay! Yay. Uh, thank you so much for your for your time, Reina. Um, any final messages to your to all your fans and supporters and everyone who's watching this recording and who is actually watching now live? Thank you, um, and please give please give what you can, how you can. I think all of us, whatever capacity we have, we have to think about this now from our own ends and see how we contribute. That's what I want to do. Yeah, I should say I'll be back in Manila for good um, in January. January. I think it's Manila Observatory. Uh, so I'm um, really looking forward. Two months ago, we have to embrace this Chicago winter and be uh, back to back to guys and I look forward to doing more. You two are looking forward to your return. Thank you very much, Faye. Thank you thank very you. much. Thank you. And thank you to our guests. Well. Stay warm. <laughs> and, uh, <I'll> <laughs> yes, and, and Reina is on Facebook. Um, check her out. Uh, watch her. Start on Facebook. I don't know if she wants to be stopped on Facebook. I'm sorry about that. She might not be on Facebook. I just made an educated <laughs> guess. So I don't, I don't know. It might, Facebook. it might be an impersonator. Be, be yeah. careful about these things. Uh, she gave a, a TED talk. She gave a TED talk, which I... I yeah, TED is good enough. That should be up in a... Spread that. Yeah, we will spread the link yep. and um, look for, and we do look forward to working with you um, in communicating science to the in communicating science to the public when you get here in in a couple of months. So thank you again and thank you. bye, Reina. Bye, bye, Reina. To those who missed that, you guys can look at our Twitter on on.